Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an example where there is a double boundary. In other words, we have a fish tank with a fish, again, one meter or 100 centimeters away from the glass. But in this case, the glass isn't so thin that we can ignore it. In this case, we've made the glass, the glass six centimeters wide, so we do have to take it into account as the rays go both through the water in the fish tank and through the glass. And maybe I should indicate that, yes, there is water in the fish tank. The fish is not just flying in the air like that. All right. So how do we figure out where the image is at? Well, we need to take care of the both of the regions through which the rays have to travel. And to get more of a feel for that, I've put an equation together here where we're going to calculate the wavelength in region one relative to the wavelength in region 3 and the wavelength in region 2 relative to the wavelength in region 3. And it depends on the index of refraction of these regions, which I've indicated right there. This would be water, this would be the index of refraction for glass, and this is the index of refraction for air. So plugging in the numbers here, you can see that this is going to be equal to 1 over n1, which is the index of refraction of water, times the index of refraction in region 3, which is air, times lambda sub 3. With other words, we can see that this is lambda sub 3 divided by 1.33. That means that the wavelength of the light traveling to the water is, is the same as the wavelength traveling to air divided by 1.33, or it's being reduced by a factor of 1.33 relative to the air. For the glass, we can see that this is equal to 1 over 1.5 times 1 times the wavelength in air, or it takes the wavelength of air and reduces it by a factor of 1.5. So you can see that the wavelength as of the light traveling to water is shorter by a factor of 1.33 relative to the wavelength of, the, of the, uh, uh, the light rays through air, and the wavelength of the rays traveling through glass are 1.5, a factor of 1.5 shorter than the wavelengths of the, uh, of the light traveling through the air which means that the apparent distance to objects in that medium will be reduced by the same amount. And that's kind of what we've been observing. So what we need to do here is we need to calculate the distance change due to the water effect and the distance change due to, due to the glass effect. So let's go ahead and calculate this. S prime is equal to minus N3. N3 would be the index of refraction of air divided by N1, which is the index of refraction of the water times the 100 centimeters, like this, and we're going to take this further, so this is S prime divided, uh, uh, S prime is equal to minus 100 centimeters divided by 1.33, so S prime is equal to a minus 75 centimeters. And this is the result that we got in the previous video where we calculated the distance to the image of the fish. But that's not all, that's only for the portion in the water. Now we have to add to that the effect of the glass, which is minus N3, which is 1 over 1.5, the index of fraction N2, times S2, which is the distance through the glass, which is 6 centimeters. And so we have to then go plus a minus 6 centimeters divided by 1.5, and so that would be a minus 4 centimeters. So that means that the additional distance, notice that the fish is 106 centimeters away from the boundary right here, but it will appear as if it's 75 plus 4 or 79 centimeters away on the other side of this first boundary right here. So in other words, the image of the fish, right here, there's the image, and then the distance from there to there, S prime is going to be equal to a minus 75 centimeters minus 4 centimeters, because that's 6 divided by 1.5. Add that together, that would be minus 79 centimeters total. And notice that S prime is indeed a minus 79 centimeters. And so you have to take care of both regions across both of the boundaries. And that's how it's done when you have a double boundary, a double flat boundary, you have to take care of both regions and take into account how the wavelength of the light changes through each of the regions based upon the differences in the indices of refraction. And that's how it's done.